How many have not heard John's testimony? Raise your hands high. You've not heard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And who else wouldn't mind hearing it again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The majority probably haven't heard it. Let's see. Should we get that one or this which, which one? You want to hold it or you want this one? Uh, you want that one? You want that one? He says he doesn't need a mic. Yeah, actually, I like the priest in stadiums is about any We're not short on time. All right. Are we okay? Can you hear me? I gotta get some. Okay. Hello. Trusting, 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 trusting. All right. Okay. 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 Most of you have, have uh, been in some of the meetings that I've spoken at. Uh, Warren, I don't know if you if you've uh, ever been at one of the meetings that I've uh, been speaking at or not. Maybe I mean maybe some of these meetings here, perhaps, or when we used to meet over at the Chinese restaurant over there, maybe. It's been a long time. Ago. A long time ago, right? A long time. Ago. Yeah, I mean, it's been yeah many many years. We started speaking here at the business as well as I know. It's been a long time. Uh, Amen. This has been, the last two weeks has been two weeks ago. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Several people. Evan and Bill. I mean, like, we're, you know, That's good. we're all full of great advice, but man, when it happens to us, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. That's not well, man. <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, where is Jesus right now? I mean, yeah. what's happening right now? I mean, where, where is he? Uh, yeah. Would you all turn around and look at one another, please? Please, right in the face, man. I mean, look right in the face, right, right in your neighbor's face. Say hi, Jesus. Hi, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I, love you. I worship you, Jesus. And I thank you that you came to live inside of us, because that's where it is. That's where it is. Right here in our midst. Right here in our midst. Oh, there he is. And you know that no, even if we seem to be alone, there will never be less than three other people with us. Every day, 24 hours a day, even if we're in a, in a building alone by ourselves, we are not really alone. There will always be three other people with us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who have committed to us to never leave us nor forsake us. Because if you have Jesus... Yeah. You, got the Father. you have the Father. Yeah. If you have the Father, you have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 You can't have one without the other. They're inseparable. They can never be separated. And they live in us. They've chosen to make their home in us. John 14 and John 15 talk about Christ coming to live in us. Jesus said, if you love one another, Amen. my Father and I will come and make our home inside of you. How about that? I mean, come on. How, how good does it get? Wow. Huh? Does it get any better than that? Yeah. If God yeah. Almighty yeah. comes to live inside of us? That's amazing. Yeah. What does yeah. Jesus say? He said, I go to the Father and prepare a place for you. He said, and where I am, there you will be also. Yeah. And there is the Father also. And there is the Holy Spirit also. Amen. When he ascended, he said he sat down at the right hand of glory. He said at the right, right hand of the Father. And where were we? Wow. Yeah. Where were we? Where were we? We were in him. And he was in us. And when he sat down at the right hand of glory, we sat down in him, in the Father, in the Spirit, in heaven. Amen. Jesus has a body. He took it to heaven yeah. with him. And us with him. Yeah. When he went to the Father, we were with him. He's yeah. placed us in the center of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus in the center of the Godhead. And we are in the center of Jesus. He's, pla he's placed us someplace that we've never been before. Thank you. That's where we live. That's the reality of our lives. Everything else, all of this is an illusion. Yeah. Do you know that there's no such thing as darkness? That sounds like a stupid statement. But let me tell you something. This is how it works. Darkness does not exist. Darkness is the absence of light. You can weigh light. Yeah. Light, light has weight. Light has mass. It has substance. 
a laser beam, they take light and they gather it together and they combine mm -hmm. it and they concentrate it and it blazes, it turns into a laser beam because it's something. It, light is an actuality, it's a, it's a reality. It's a, yeah, it's a substance. But darkness is not. Wow. No. Darkness is not a substance. Darkness does not exist. It only is the absence of light. Yeah. The truth is light. Jesus is light. He's the light of the world. He's the light of our life. And he's the truth. I mean, I'm, I don't know about you guys. I mean, I... I go through, I've been going through some really tough stuff lately. On, but yeah. I'm telling you what. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is with me. Amen. 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 I know that he is. I know that he lives inside of me. I know that when I need that strength, I need that place to rest. But man, if he's there. He's there. He never allows me to despair. He never allows me to lose hope. Never leave me no. no matter what. No matter how dark some things look, because there doesn't seem to be any light, I know that he's going to sustain me, man. I can never change. He's done it for 45 years. Yeah. Praise God. You know, I, I got saved back in the Jesus movement. I was a hippie. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was a hippie. He was a hippie. Hey, listen, I thought LSD was a vitamin. I'm serious. Yeah. I took LSD, mescaline, peyote. I wasn't into like heroin and you know methamphetamines and all that stuff. I was kind of like on the spiritual search, and so we were doing everything this, with this idea of trying to find the reality and the truth. Of course, we were pretty deceived. We didn't know we were deceived. That's the, if you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived because you're deceived, right? I mean, that's the. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't find out until Jesus showed me that I was deceived. Right? Uh -huh. Amen. That's the only yeah. way you find out. <laughs> but uh, you know, I followed all kinds of Eastern religion and stuff. I lived in Hawaii for a number of years. I lived that back in the jungles. I ate nothing but yeah. fruit for months on end, vegetables and fruit for years at a time. Didn't eat anything that with an animal. But I had a face that wouldn't eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was content for years trying to get to God through my groceries. I knew that if I got my body pure enough and clean enough, yeah. that I would be able to get closer to God, right? right. Well, I can God. tell you that you can't get to God, God through your groceries because I did try it for years, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you're a vegetarian or you know, fruitarian or I was trying to be a breathitarian. You lived in the lived in the Yeah. As a matter of fact, remember the this year that they're having all the volcanic eruptions? Yeah. Oh yeah. On a lot of the Photographs where the volcano was erupting. I lived in that area when I went to first went to Hawaii. It was a very isolated uh, uh, rural area. There was a lot of jungles. There was and there was a lot of fruit. I mean, you could walk through the jungles, man. And it would be oranges and avocados and bananas and the, you know passion fruit and breadfruit and sugar cane and and uh, four or five different kinds of avocados and oranges. I mean, anything you wanted was just there to eat. And being a, a fruitarian vegetarian. Yeah. It was perfect for me, you know. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was incredible, right? A lot of mosquitoes, that was a problem. Oh, <laughs> yeah. One time I was walking through the jungle when it was dark, and I was walking along, I knew that there was, and I could tell that there was like guava trees around, so I was eating guavas, you know. I, ate, I must have ate about five pounds of guavas, right? The next morning, I walked down the same path, I couldn't find one guava that I could eat, because they were all filled with little white maggots. Oh, <laughs> no. It was dark, I couldn't yeah. see them. Oh. I mean, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian, I don't eat meat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, that was one time you did. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Anyhow, there was a volcano. There was a volcano. It was called Green Mountain. It stuck up yeah. like this. Yeah. And uh, Capoho Center Cone was where this great eruption was taking place yeah. recently. Well, that mountain, Capoho, when it erupted in 1960, mm -hmm. went around that mountain, and, it, and there was a, a perfect center cone covered in yeah. in uh, uh, jungle vines and trees and stuff, right? And no one would go near that. The Hawaiians wouldn't touch it because they believed it was kapu. They said, no, 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 that's kapu. And I said, what do you mean it's kapu? And I'm, I'm wearing a loincloth. I got a wooden bowl and a wooden spoon. That's, that was my possessions. And uh, <laughs> they said, no, 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 there's ghosts living there. You don't, we don't go in that, right? 
Well, so I climbed up the side of the mountain and went down and I got down inside the crater and down inside the crater was a lake at the bottom of the crater and surrounded with fruit. There was like beautiful avocado trees, there was breadfruit, there was passion fruit, there was guavas, there was sugar cane, there was several different types of uh, bamboo growing down there. And I lived down there, right? And of course I was, I was you wanted the Hindu stuff, so I was meditating and all that stuff, you know. And I looked up one day, I got to the edge of the crater, I looked over and there was a house trailer being set up by Stanford University. This great big antennas all over the place, and I've been meditating and been getting all kinds of reception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I hiked down, I went up to where the guys were, and I said, we're, home. we're researchers from Stanford. We're, we, we're picking up uh, signals from outer space. I said, man, you should just come up to, down to the crater and talk to me, man. I've been getting that stuff for months. <laughs> But, you know, the emptiness of not knowing Jesus, man, it was like, it was very frustrating. I couldn't find, I just couldn't seem to find God. Yeah. Well, eventually, I mean, I had to follow a guru from India. Uh, I mean, I was really got rad. I stopped completely doing any drugs after I got to Hawaii. I didn't, I didn't do anything. Uh, I was trying to purify myself, you know. Well, the purer I got, the worse I felt, man, because I couldn't get rid of me. I'm telling you, no matter where I went, there he was. Oh, my God. Can't get away. I know. It's like you just can't get away from yourself. Yeah. I went out in the jungle one night, man, and I was saying, you know, I'm fasting. I'm fasting for weeks on end, man. I'm, I'm eating vegetables and fruit, trying to, to reach the Godhead, man, the reality of the, of, of the Atman, of the... You know, the, the universal mind, the universal force, right? And I go, yeah. because we didn't believe it, it was a person. We believed it was a, a force that force. became good and evil and didn't have a mind. It didn't have a, a will. It didn't have a desires. It didn't have, it had no love because it was impersonal, right? Yeah. That's the God of, that's the God of uh, Eastern religion. Yeah. I get one in the jungle one night, man, I just, I am pissed. I mean, I can't find God to save my rear end, man, no matter what I do, you know? And I start screaming, Why don't you do something? If you're really real, why don't you reveal yourself? And man, I cursed him out, I called him every name that I could think of, and I jumped up and down, and I stopped, and I said, Why don't you do something? I'm sure that Jesus was probably going, oh, here he goes again, oh, rolling his oh, eyes, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's rolling his eyes. Oh, boy, you're in for it. <laughs> well, I, after a few years, I gave up on this whole cosmic consciousness, Eastern religion stuff, you know, and just kind of went back into the rock world of rock and roll. And, and uh, I didn't really start using drugs again. I did start growing pot. Yeah. Well, as it turns out, the Hawaiian Mafia was trying to corner the drug market on the big one. They, had, they were cornered the drug market on, on, on Maui, on Oahu. I mean, we're talking about full, we're talking the big time crime syndicate, right? The Chinese, uh, Chinese Hawaiian uh, mob. Yeah. Well, they were trying to concentrate all, uh, control all the drug traffic on the big island of Hawaii, right? Well, I mean, I'm just a little hippie hippie growing a couple of plants of pot. But my neighbor, who lived on our property, he was a big time dealer, everybody knew him and stuff, right? And I hear this, you know, shots ringing out at midnight one night, and I go, I jump up, and I go, what's that? Now, like, the side of this mountain above Honau now, above Captain, Captain Cook, it's like a big amphitheater. Yeah. Yeah. And I hear, I hear Teddy in. He's this black uh, bass player that is like known as Mr. Kona Gold, right? Very famous guy. Yeah. I mean, he's, he was taking my pot over to people like uh, Neil Young, smoking my weed, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm a hippie hippie. I'm not trying to make any money or selling any dope or nothing, but Teddy was making a lot of money. Next thing I go, bang, 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 bang. I hear shots going off. Jump up. No, no, don't shoot my baby. Don't hit me. Don't kill my baby. What? Because Teddy's got a wife, yeah. and he's got a little boy. Right. So I, I run down there, and I hear a lot of commotion. I get down to Teddy's house, and I'm about a, probably 50 yards from his house, and his, 
his Jeep is parked in his driveway, or a Jeep. Well, I looked in the Jeep, it was full of guns, man. I mean, it had it just looked like an arsenal in there, man. Well, those, the, those guys were trying to get Teddy under their control, and they wanted him to give them his money and his dope, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I stand at the car, and I turned on the headlights of the Jeep, and it shined on the front of that little house. And I said, this is the corner, please. We got you completely surrounded. Come out with, come out with your hands up. <laughs> uh, I'm just a stupid hippie, man. I don't know. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like the lights go out, total silence. This is the corner, please. Come out. I got you surrounded. You need to come out. Well, here's these two guys walk out of the house now. Teddy and his wife and child jumped off their porch into the coffee trees. Yeah. Which was a, it was a high jump. And they were, you know, they were beat, beat up pretty bad when they hit the lava rocks. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> and they ran away down to the highway, the Cookie Highway. Okay. And these two guys come down towards the Jeep. Now, I'm not a Christian, believe me. I hate Christians. I can't stand them. They're a pain in the butt, man. They're always telling me I'm going to hell. I'm not saved, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> really bugged me. <laughs> and it's, they walk up. To the, so in the meantime, a friend of mine came down behind me, and Jeff, and he's standing to my right. I'm standing by the Jeep. And we're standing, and we raise bananas out in avocados commercially on that farm. I'm standing at a banana patch. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning. Those two guys walk right down the lights of their Jeep. One of them's got a, a, a 38 revolver. The other one's got a 30-30 deer rifle. And I'm going, stop, drop your weapons. This is the corner of police. <laughs> You'll, we'll have to shoot if you don't drop your weapons. They walk right up to Jeff. They hit him right in the face with the 38, knock him out cold. He flops into a gun, into the gully. And they put the gun in my face and pulled the trigger. They put a 30 30 in my face. Yeah. 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 From this far away. Yeah. Well, when the blast went off, the, the fire from the muzzle blinded me and I fell to the ground and I'm a man on the ground like this and I go oh god they blew the top of my head off <laughs> and I, oh no it's still there I stood up man well this guy Jacob Angi Kuakini he's on speed balls man heroin and, and speed mixed so his eyeballs are like blobs of blood man. Yeah. he goes when I stood up he goes what he couldn't believe that he didn't blow him. He just killed a friend of mine five days before, chopped him up with a hatchet. A good friend of mine, he whacked him, chopped him up into a dozen pieces and threw him all over the house. So I knew this guy was pretty serious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I stood up and he goes, he, got the, he gets the rifle by the barrel and he hit me in the head with it as hard as he could. And Jeff, in the meantime, came to and was kind of laying in the ditch, trying to not draw any attention to himself. He goes, John, you're going to hit me in the ditch. It sounded like someone threw a watermelon on the ground. And I got back up, and then he hit me again. I got back up, and he hit me again. He hit me like six times, fractured my skull, knocked all my teeth loose, split my nose in half, not cut my lip. Oh, I mean, I was. Bad, bad, really bad. Yeah. And then finally, on the last blow, he broke the rifle in half over the top of my head. Yeah. We're talking about a 30 30 deer rifle, you know, they have walnut stocks. Oh, yeah. you know. yeah. <laughs> broke it in half over my head. Yeah. I'm sitting on the ground. I'm seeing birds and stars. Yeah. I'm, doo, 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 oh, yeah. doo, doo, doo. I mean, that's why I kept getting up, man. I had to just completely knock, my, knock me senseless. Sitting on the ground, and he's so pissed off because he broke his rifle in half and he missed shooting me. And I mean, it was just insane. Yeah. So he goes in the Jeep and pulls out a 12 gauge shotgun, loads it, pumps it, comes over, he sticks the gun, the 12 gauge between my eyes, and goes, I hate you. I'm going to blow your head off. And he goes, boom, boom. And I, I'm, I can't do anything. I'm just incapacitated because oh, yeah. he. Basically, he fractured my skull on both sides, man. I, I was messed up. And I said, uh, Jacob, why are you going to kill me? I can't hurt you. I said, I can't even walk. I said, why would you want to kill me? 
Why do you want to kill me? He said, because I just hate you. That's why. And he popped that gun, man. He was going to blow my head off. And I knew he was going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. At that moment, a few weeks before, I picked up a hitchhiker named Paul Papulius, this big, blonde-haired Greek. And he says, do you got any, any marijuana? And I says, yeah, I got marijuana. He says, do you mind if I have some? I says, yeah, I took him up to the house. I gave him like a, a brown shopping bag full of pot, right? And he says, wow, man. He says, do you sure you can? I said, I don't smoke that. I don't smoke those things. You can have that, right? He goes, well, I'm a backstage Christian. He said, I shouldn't be smoking weed at all. He says, but I'm going to tell you what, I really appreciate the weed. He says, I'm going to give you something. He gave me his Bible. He gave me his Bible. Well, I started reading the Bible. And I remember this, I remember a scripture, I'm sitting on the ground, and this one scripture came to my mind that I had read in the Bible about judging a tree by the fruit that it bears. Good tree bears good fruit, bad tree bears bad fruit. And I'm sitting on the ground with a 12 gauge shotgun between my eyes, and I'm going, <coughs> bad fruit. Bad fruit. <laughs> this is bad fruit. Whatever I'm doing, I, whatever I'm doing, I gotta change. Yeah. Well, I, ended, I ended up, uh, Teddy and his wife went, went and got the police. The police came in like storm I mean, well, stormtroopers. Before they blew your head. Before, right? Just before. as he was getting ready to shoot me, man. The yeah. police came out of the banana trees, man, with, I mean, shotguns, and I mean, they were they were like right. they were yeah. like uh, SWAT guys. Yeah. And well, one of the guys that I'm getting killed, yeah. the other guy ended up going going to I had to testify against him at an attempted murder trial, which my attempted murder. Yeah. Come on. And the Pocono police told me I was the first person in the history of Hawaii to testify in open court against one of those guys. Yeah. Well, like they, they, they tried to blow up my house, they tried to shoot me, they came down to my house all the time with guns, I would have to sleep in trees at night, I'd be in a tree and people would be milling around looking for me to shoot me. They were called, they would blow up my house up, I mean, after six months I live with a 12 gauge shotgun on my pillow. Mm -hmm. And when you walk up the stairs to court? Then I go to court and I walk up the stairs and you have big Hawaiian Chinese guy standing on each step going, you're a dead man, we're going to kill you, man. You keep your mouth shut, don't you say a word. Why well, yeah. did I put the guy in prison with my testimony? Yeah. Jacob did. I did. Well, not too long after that, I mean, things were not going good for me. You know what no. I'm saying? <laughs> it was better in the volcano crater eating fruit. <laughs> So I'm riding in the back of a pickup truck. My car broke down, my girlfriend left me, man, my life was a complete total disaster. I was unhappy, miserable. I knew that I didn't have God. I knew I didn't have anything. And so I'm riding in the back of a pickup truck. It's drizzling rain, it's kind of late at night. And I'm sitting on the back of the truck. It slides down, it, all of a sudden it slides sideways. We're going about 50 miles an hour. Something hit me in the back. This lost three of my vertebrae, knocked me into the bed of the truck. Truck stops, it's dark, the lights are on, it's eerie, you know, the, all the oh, yeah. fog and everything, man. I, I, I'm like, oh, my back. I dislodged three of my vertebrae and literally pushed them apart. The doctor says, How do you walk, man? How do you stand up? I can't find your vertebrae. That's the loss when she met me. They said, I said, What happened? I said, We hit a man. We hit a man. I said, no, he hit me. <laughs> I was on the back, sitting on the back edge of the truck, and this drunk Filipino man, it's like they had a Filipino dance hall in Kona at that time, where all the Filipino men, because there was very few women, they would all, on Saturday nights, they would all dance at the Filipino dance hall, and all the hippie girls would dance for a quarter of dance. And they would all get drunk and everything, and then they'd close the place. But, well, this guy is drunk. He's like 75 or 80 years old. And he's wandering down the middle of the road like this, in the rain, in the dark, and we hit him. Sure. He hit my back so hard they said that he bounced off my back and flew like 30 feet in the air. Went off the bank and he went head first and he lodged his head into the crook of the tree. Mm. And when, it, when his head went into the crook of the tree, it took a scalp of his eyebrows and literally completely peeled his entire scalp off the top of his head and was hanging on his back. 
Ooh. I climbed down. Oops, I don't mean to ruin the dinner there. <laughs> <laughs> I climbed down the hill. I could barely walk. I climbed down the hill, and, and there's the old man stuck in a, the head stuck in the trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. And he can't speak good English. He speaks Tagalog, right? And I said, "It's okay. You're not gonna die. You're not gonna die." And I grabbed his scalp and I pulled it back over, and I kind of tucked it in there. You know, you're not gonna die. I said, "All right, God." Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal. <laughs> if you don't let the old man die, I'll go to church tomorrow. That was Christmas Day. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Day, 1973, yeah. December. Wow. If you don't let the old man die, then I'll go to church. Amen. So the next day I went to the hospital and I went up this in the Kona hospital. And I said, I want to see. You. The old Filipino guy went in. He's sitting there. He's got a cast on his arm. His arm is broken. They sewed so his scalp back around. He looked like Frankenstein. But he was okay. All right. That was all it was. He was okay. <laughs> and I'm going, I didn't forget the promise. You know what I'm saying? I'm going, yeah. uh -oh, I gotta... oh, man. i got to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> well, I belong to a... a what in Hawaii they call mahui. Like all the farmers in the Kona Coast, we get together, we all we consolidate our produce, and we ship our avocados and bananas all over the world, basically. And one of the guys in my co-op was Brother Porfirio, who was an assembly guy pastor, right? And him and I were very good friends. I didn't believe in his Christian, you know, this whole bloody Christian religion. It's a bloody religion. You guys just lower, believe in blood. Lower, 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 Right? Yeah, you guys really are sincere, but you're very low vibratory level. You know? I mean, yeah, really. Yeah, you're, you're, you're in a bloody, a bloody religion. Little did I know. So I looked across the street from the hospital. I went outside the hospital, and there was Profirio's Assembly of God sitting there, right across the street from the hospital. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he was a pastor of a little Filipino congregation. They didn't speak any English. All they spoke was Tagalog in that in his church. So I walked across the street. I walk in, walk into the church. I'm gonna keep my promise. I'm gonna go to church, right? I walked in there, man. You know they say that God's everywhere. Did you know that God was in hell? If you go to hell. You can't, still can't escape him. There's no place we can go to get away from him. See, God has never left any of us. There's not one person on this planet that God has ever left. We had none to leave. Our sin did not separate God from us. It separated us from God. He's always been there. You know, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says that God hates a sinner every day. If you look up that scripture, you'll find out that it's not in the original manuscript. It was added by King James and uh, guys. It's in brackets. God doesn't hate the sinner every day. And they say, well, God can't look on sin. Well, baloney. Baloney. How dumb can you get and still breathe? He looks on sin every single day. Do you think that he wasn't aware of what Charlie Manson was doing? You think he doesn't know what you guys do or I do in secret? Oh yes. Oh yes. He looks on sin every day. But to him, that's not the point. The point is not the sin, the point is the grace. He has a solution for sin, and it's called grace. His solution for sin is grace. Not guilt, not condemnation, but freedom. It's grace. So I walked in that church. Porfirio's eyes got about that big. <laughs> Hi, Brother John. Hi, Brother Porfirio. He goes, what are you doing here? Well, you know. And the Holy Spirit just, it was like as soon as I walked in that door, the presence of God was so powerful that I actually started feeling like weak. Yeah. And I stumbled into the church, and the further I got in, the more I was overcome by the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't there with a big stick to tell me what a 
yeah. idiot I was. He was there to say, hey, listen, welcome home, son. Yeah. Glad to see you. And those Filipino ladies, there was just a bunch of ladies in there. There was not even any men except for Brother Porfirio. Yeah. They jumped up and attacked me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of these ladies, at least a half a dozen, yeah. jumped up and grabbed me. Yeah. And started laying hands on me, speaking in tongues. I don't believe in tongues. Yeah. My the church I went to when I was a little boy, they said that was not that was not tongues is of the devil. Oh, yeah. And these Filipino ladies go, no, and they're prophesying over me in Tagala, and they're speaking in tongues. And man, the more they yeah. did it, the worse I got. Pretty soon, I'm on the floor, I'm rolling around, I'm wailing, I'm crying. I'm I'm like completely, totally wiped out. Amen. I never heard any <laughs> I never heard the gospel I met the gospel I met him I met the good news when you meet the good news that's the gospel do you understand me that's the good news Jesus is the good news and I met Jesus that day when I walked out of that place I didn't even know what I was doing yeah I ended up going to a Filipino church that turned out to be a cult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a Filipino cult. <laughs> Took me a while to realize that it actually wasn't a Christian church. They, had, no. they were worshiping this general named Moncado who fought with uh, uh, MacArthur in World War II. They had a recording of his that was speech that he gave on a 78 RPM record they played every Sunday morning. They would play him, and then they had a picture of him on the wall in his general's uniform with his third arm coming out of his And it says, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And I was suspicious when I saw that. <laughs> you think? But eventually, the Holy Spirit led me to a group of believers called the Fellowship of Christian Pilgrims. Yeah and a man named Ken Smith, and I became a disciple. Amen. I moved off my farm, moved in with a bunch of Christians, and that began a 45-year yeah. journey. Now, at this point, I mean, you know, I mean, we, we lived in Hawaii for seven years. We lived, lived, in, uh, we lived in Japan for a couple of years. We lived in Santa Cruz for 10 years. We had a couple of churches in Santa Cruz. We had a couple of churches in Hawaii. Uh, I have no pastor. I mean, I've pastored a lot, but I am not a good pastor. <laughs> I just don't have that. Uh, it's like I don't like to counsel people 15 or 16 times over the same issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 They said, go fast for 24 hours and come back and talk to me, please. Uh, and they never come back. <laughs> Did you try that one? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, God has done, you know, we've, I've, I've preached many, many nations. I mean, I've, I've seen incredible miracles. I mean, I've seen creative miracles. I've seen uh, 